G'day, my name is BH and Dad, and we're going to look at this AMD Radon Pro W6800. It's AMD's new flagship workstation class graphics card, and it's just been made available in September 2021. Now, before we get started, I just want to make a big comment about this graphics card on its aesthetics. I'm really digging this nice deep blue. It just looks gorgeous, and I can tell you, tell you this in terms of material-wise, it's quite quite a bit of a weight to it so definitely you know you're actually getting some nice good solid materials for your money and unfortunately being a production card it's going to be in a workstation and most workstation will have their sides closed so you won't be able to more than likely see this graphics card which is a bit of a pity because it is a gorgeous looking card so definitely i've got to give a nice little tick to amd for at least putting some effort in the looks of this card this W6800 is a 7 nanometer RDNA 2 architecture and it has 60 compute units with featuring ray accelerators. Now what's really interesting on this card is AMD has given it a nice gorgeous generous 32 gigs of GDDR6 with ECC memory as well too. So it does have the stability, which is what we want in a production card. It has the certifications as well, which I'll put a link in the description below for the ones that you can see the certificate for the applications for professional applications. When AMD introduced this card to me earlier this year, and they actually showed a lot of benchmarks between this W6800 and the Nvidia Quadro RTX 5000. And if you remember from some of my live stream, I said we'll just take it with a grain of salt until we actually physically get the card so we can do the actual comparison. And guess what? I've actually got the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 here. So I'm going to put it head to head and compare the numbers for you. First, our test bench. We'll be testing both of the cards in this Lenovo ThinkStation P620. And this one's configured with an AMD Threadripper Pro. 3975WX, that's a 32 core processor with 64 gigs of RAM. This would be considered a typical powerful workstation. I ran the benchmarks three times on each card and chose the best scoring result. And I'm just gonna put them side to side, the results for you to see. So here is Geekbench, Blender, which is a mixed bag or between the two. You can Photoshop, which pretty much scored the same. Pugin Premiere. Now this did favor the Quadro RTX 5000, especially in the live playback. Pugin After Effects. Now this also was very similar. Pugin DaVinci Resolve. Now the scores were very similar, but I did notice that the 4K playback and the 4K effects was better on the W6800. Now this is more than likely due to the larger VRAM. Luxmark. The W6800 pretty much just smashes the RTX 5000. And spec view pref. One of the benchmarks and applications, unfortunately, I did not perform on this W6800 is for machine or deep learning. Unfortunately, I'm just not smart enough and I don't have the training in deep learning yet, but I can definitely tell you the potential for deep learning on this Radon Pro is extremely good because if you've got big, large data set, it will definitely make use of that 32 gigs of ECC memory. And one of the things you do need to know though, is if you're doing deep learning on an AMD card, you do need to learn Rock M besides your normal FireTorch and TensorFlow. So it's just a translation, unfortunately, you just gotta run, but definitely it is, would be worth it in the end because this is a compute power horse for what you need to do for deep learning. Now have a look at the fan noise of this. AMD did say that this card does run wider and I saw what I tested out anywhere between when it's idling and doing even up to about 50% load the actual 
fan noise was only measured in at 44 decibels. Now, when I put a 100% load on the W6800, it managed to measure in at a peak of 60 decibels. Now, the actual fan speed was at about 50%. And when I did the same thing with the RTX 5000, that was measuring at 65 decibels. I also manually ramp up the fan speed on the W6800 to 100% just to see what's the maximum loudness of the fan was and it managed to measure in a peak of 70 decibels whereas when I did that to the RTX 5000 that measured in a peak of 79 decibel at 100% fan level. Looking at the fan noise of this graphics card when it's on 100% load, I've got to say it's very enticing because it is quite quiet compared to its competitors. So definitely I would not mind this in a workstation right on my desk if this is possible because it is good to actually hear, not it screaming quite loud or high pitch at all. As a filming of this video, I did see the price of this W6800 and it's been listed here in one of the shops in Australia and it goes for 4,500. Now just to give you a perspective of the uh, Quadro RTX 5000, that was listed on the same site for 3,300. Now I know there is an update to that, which is the A5000, and that also from the same site was going for 3,500. Now that only has 24 gigs of RAM, and after that, if you want to go more gigs of RAM, then you have to go all the way to the A5000 for the NVIDIA. And that charges for the same website was going for 7,900. So that's a big, big jump there. So I'm seeing that AMD has absolutely, has smacked themselves quite nicely in the market in between the A5000 and the A6000. So I think AMD has done a great job on the pricing and also the performance does match very nicely with its price point. Look at the performance results and the price point of the W6800. I definitely can say you should put this on the table to actually consider because it is quite an eye opener. But there are some applications which still favor NVIDIA graphics cards like the Adobe Suite and Simmons NX, but else for everything else, this is a very good graphics card to actually consider if you're in the market for a production workstation class graphics card. Now, I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, even to support my channel, smack that like button for me. It does help me out. And if you haven't done already, subscribe my channel, hit the subscribe button. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.